Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Move among us as we celebrate the blessings that you've poured out into our lives. And as we offer ourselves, Lord, to be a blessing to others. Help us to hear your message for us today. Give us the grace and the courage to answer as you call. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. What do you see in this picture? That's what I see. Dandelions, a patch of weeds. I need to get rid of them out of my yard. But what do children see? Children see flowers for mom and blowing white fluff that you can wish on. What about this next picture? What do you see? <laughs> Something we haven't seen for a while, right? Praise the Lord, we have seen puddles. I saw puddles on the way to worship this morning and I was excited to see them. But when I see a, when I see a mud puddle, I think I want to keep my shoes and my clothes from getting muddy. In fact, yesterday I was in Canadian and my mom, I went with my mom and my little nephew and my little niece to the cemetery to put some flowers out on the graves. And um, we kept telling the children, now, be careful, watch the mud, don't step in that. Because, you know, I didn't want that mud in my car. We didn't want it in the house, but we couldn't keep them from getting in the mud. They, they love, children love mud puddles. They see something to splash in, something to play in. And I think I saw some pictures on Facebook of the VM children splashing in the water. And probably, if you have children, maybe they've been splashing in the mud puddles this weekend as well. And we give thanks to God for that water, for those mud puddles. So, what about wind? How do you feel about the wind and the dirt? Ugh. I've had enough of that. When I, when I hear the, the weatherman saying that it's going to be windy, chance of blowing dust, right? I think, oh no, it's going you know, to make a mess of my hair, it's going to make me sneeze, I'm going to have a headache, it's going to fill up my house and my garage and my car with dirt. What a mess, right? But children, when the wind blows, children close their eyes and spread their arms and fly with the wind. What about when it's time to sing? When you hear music, it's time to stand up and sing in, in worship. Many of us know that we can't sing very well. We, we couldn't be on the voice, right? So we just listen, or we, we move our mouth, but we don't sing out, or we sing very quietly, because we don't want anybody to hear that we might miss the notes. But children feel the beat and move to it. They sing out the words, and if they don't know the words, they just make some up, right? In today's scripture passage, we'll read about Jesus' disciples acting like typical adults and Jesus reminding them of how important little children are to God. Our scripture passage for today is found in Luke chapter 18, verses 15 through 17. Luke chapter 18, 15 through 17. People were bringing even infants to him, to Jesus, that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they sternly ordered them not to do it. But Jesus called for them and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As most of you who are regulars here know, we've been studying Jesus' life and ministry found in the Gospel of Luke for some time. And the reason that we're studying the entire Gospel and in order is so that we can see how the stories of Jesus' life fit together and what the major themes are of the whole, the whole story of Jesus' life. 
And so before we begin to study today's passage, I want you to notice that this passage is actually a continuation of Jesus' teaching that began in chapter 17, verse 20, when the Pharisees asked Jesus when the kingdom of God was coming. And Jesus answered that the kingdom of God is among you. In other words, the kingdom of God was already present in the world through Jesus and his ministry. And, Jesus, and the kingdom of God was spreading as people heard Jesus' teaching and responded by living according to the values of the kingdom of God, according to Jesus' teaching. And it's the same today. The kingdom of God is among us to the extent that we live in God's kingdom according to Jesus' teaching and his example. Now, this same teaching segment, segment about the kingdom of God continues into chapter 18 with the parable of the widow and the unjust judge and the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. We studied both of those scriptures not long ago. And at the end of the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, Jesus said, All who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. Now, in our passage for today, Luke tells us that people were bringing even infants to Jesus so that he could bless them, so that he could touch them. Now, I need you to know that at that time, it's estimated that infant mortality rates for Jesus' time and place were as high as 30%. And as many as 30% more children would die by the age of six. So it's not surprising that parents would bring their children to Jesus so that he could touch them because Jesus was known to be a healer. And they thought, well, maybe if Jesus touches my baby, my child, then my child will have good health and will live to grow into adulthood. However, in the culture of Jesus' time and place, social status played a very important role. And children, unlike today, had no status. So the disciples thought that Jesus, the great teacher, healer, miracle worker, should not be bothered by children. Jesus had more important things to do than to hold babies. And this was an understanding that pretty much everybody of that time would have, they, had thought, they would have thought the same as the disciples. Jesus had more important things to do than to take care or to touch, or to hold, or to have anything to do with babies. But Jesus quickly corrected his disciples and said that not only should they let the children come to him, but that it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. In other words, the disciples had missed the point that Jesus had been trying to teach them. In the kingdom of God, all who exalt themselves will be humbled but all who humble themselves will be exalted. And who could be more humble than babies? They're helpless. They depend on their parents for everything. They make no real contribution to the world. Jesus said the kingdom of God belongs to the humble. And so the kingdom of God belongs to little children. Children do not try to exalt themselves. They pick dandelions play in the mud, run with the wind, and sing with joy. Children know that they need someone to care for them. And so children have no difficulty receiving God's grace and the kingdom of God that is offered to them as a free gift. It is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Jesus clearly teaches us by his words and his example that God loves children. And that it is much easier for children to put their faith in Jesus and to follow him than it is for adults to put their faith in Jesus and to follow him and to live in God's kingdom. And statistics indicate that the same is true today. According to research, as high as 85% of the people who participate in church today decided to follow Jesus before the age of 18. In fact, most people decide to follow Jesus between the ages of 4 and 14. 
Now this is not really surprising. Child development experts tell us that this time frame between the ages of 4 and 14, that's the time when we form our understanding of the world. It's when we form our understanding of relationships, of love, of God. This is the season of life when people are formed for the most part. This is when we are most impressionable. On the other hand, the older a person gets, the less likely he or she will change. And therefore, the harder it is for an older person to come to faith in Jesus and let the Holy Spirit change their life. Now, it's never impossible. With God, all things are possible. A person of any age can come to faith and let Jesus change their life. But it does get harder and harder the older we get. Now, many of you probably already knew this. It's certainly not new information. In fact, listen to this quote from a book titled Evangelism of Youth, written by Albert Gage and first published in 1922. 1922. Albert Gage wrote, God intends that we should win people in the days of their youth, while their hearts are young and sensitive. But we are apt to let the springtime pass, and then with great effort, create a religious fervor by our own efforts to win men and women to Christ. We work hard, spend thousands of dollars, and at the best get disappointingly small results. We have waited too long. That which we should do is to work with God in his seasons. Jesus said to his disciples back then, and he says to his disciples today, let the little children come to me and do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And I would say not only should we let the little children come to Jesus, but we should do all that we can to help them come to Jesus. Because if they do not receive the kingdom of God while they are children, they may never enter it. And that's a very sad thought. Especially if you're thinking about the children that you care about. Your own children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, neighbors. And I think that we will all agree that the world is better for all of us when more people in the world are following Jesus. So we want to help as many people as we can to become followers of Jesus because in doing so, we help to make the world a better place. Now, we as a church know, we understand that children are important to Jesus. And so children are important to us, right? So I want to take a few minutes today to celebrate the ways that we are helping children and youth come to Jesus. Let's start with our van ministry. In the most literal way, those who drive the van bring children to our church to learn about Jesus. In addition, the van drivers also represent Jesus to the children as they build caring relationships with the ones that they bring to and from the church for our activities. Those who have been a part of this van ministry team this year include David and Belinda Head, David and Liz Tips, Toby and Raylan Kitchens, Brian and Iva Noble. Now, you may have noticed that in your bulletin you have an insert that looks like this on the blue page. And here's an opportunity. If you're not involved in one of these ministries, or if you'd like to be involved in more of these ministries, here's an opportunity to say, yes, I'm interested in being involved in ministries to children and youth in our church. And there's a, a place for you to mark if you're interested in the van ministry, which we have on Sunday mornings. You can mark that, and we will get it to those folks, and we'll get you trained and get you involved in that important van ministry. Now, the van obviously runs on Sunday morning and brings the children to Sunday morning discipleship groups, what used to be called Sunday school. And uh, Linda Elder teaches a class for children in the third, fourth, and fifth grades, and she also recruits teachers for the other children's classes for a quarter at a time, for about three months at a time. And this year, the following have served as teachers in our children's discipleship groups. Gina Martis, Debbie Viam, Deborah Kettner, Susan Cage, David Head, 
David Markle, Ivan Noble, and Janie Hughes. Now, did I miss anybody? It's possible I missed somebody. We looked back and tried to find everybody. Now, at this time, all of our youth, grades 6 through 12, are meeting together, and Nancy Beckerink teaches our youth discipleship group. Now, last summer, Roper Kirby taught the group while Nancy took a break during the summer. And Nancy would also like to take a break this summer. She would like for her break to start at the end of June, last Sunday in June, and go through until school starts. So she can have a break. And if so, if you would be interested in taking that class for that period of time, that would be a great blessing to Nancy and, and to the youth and also to you, I'm sure. Um, we will provide you with... Uh, whatever you need to do that and so if you would think and pray about that people who teach these discipleship groups give their time and energy to help children and youth come to Jesus they truly are making disciples of Jesus Christ so if God is calling you to join this ministry team by teaching a Sunday morning discipleship class for children or youth there's a place for those right here on this paper children on one line and youth for the summer on the third line there as you all know, during worship, we have a, a group of people who share a brief message for children, and the rest of us get to enjoy that as well. As Edie said this morning, we, we do that. We make time in our worship service because children are important to God and children are important to us. And our children's moment team this year has included Sally Messenger, Ivan Noble, Lori Bales, and when Lori's not available, sometimes Bailey steps up and does it for her mother. Uh, Nancy Beckerink and Edie Niblett. If you would be willing to lead a children's moment about once a month, there's a place for you to mark on this insert. In the past, you've had KFC, and this year we've made some significant changes and renamed our children's Wednesday after school program, Rock. Rock stands for Reaching Out Christ to kids. It takes a lot of people who love the Lord and who love children to have rock each Wednesday afternoon. Ivan Noble and Deborah Kettner oversee the program and organize everything, and Debbie Viam has taken on the job of putting the lessons together for the teachers. The teachers for this year have included Mag Ann Reynolds, who sometimes is assisted by her son Gil Robert, Helen Cook, Debbie Viam. Wanda Schaefer and Carol Cox work together. Their, their class is fairly large. Lynn Campbell, Betty Ennis, Janie Hughes, Wynn Cantwell, and Tori Beckering. I'm sorry I don't have pictures of them with their classes. Uh, Buck Campbell and Daniel Ray and Maureen Hooten has specifically worked with uh, Riley Kenton. Kettner because he was still working on some things that he had started in KFC and we wanted him to be able to finish that. So Maureen worked with Riley. Also at the beginning of the school year, Joanne Head worked in this program and was a tremendous blessing to her class. She worked with Lynn and uh, I know that Joanne was a blessing to those children and the children were to her and so we remember her great part in this important ministry. When we're short on teachers, Jay Messenger teaches a class if he's needed. Julie Cage and Melba King take care of the snacks for us. Rock begins each Wednesday with a snack and a time to play outside from about 3.30 till 4. And then the children go to their classes to learn how to use the Bibles. Some of you have contributed to, to buy Bibles for that, and they're used every Wednesday afternoon. The children learn stories from the Bible. They learn how to use the Bible, and they have memorized some scriptures. One of the things that they've learned this year is the Lord's Prayer. The last half hour of rock varies each week of the month. One week, Sally and Jay lead the children in praising the Lord through music. One week, uh, Casey Coker provides a craft project for the children to do. Often it is related to what they're learning in their classes. Uh, one Wednesday of the month, Nancy Beckering teaches a Bible story. And then the following week, they have Bible Bowl. Bible Bowl includes fun activities and a contest with questions from the Bible story that Nancy has told them or some maybe some questions from what they're learning in their classes. Jay Messenger leads the quiz part of the Bible Bowl and uh, Tori Beckerink and Daniel Ray often lead the activities. As you can see, rock takes a lot of people. Those who are a part of the rock team will tell you that it takes time and energy. It's a commitment every week. 
And they'll also tell you that they receive as much of a blessing as they give. We appreciate everyone who makes Rock a wonderful way for our own children and children from other churches as well as children who don't have a church to come to learn about Jesus. Rock is on break for, for the summer, but we'll start back when school starts. And so if God is calling you to join this exciting ministry, please mark your bulletin insert. We need all the help we can get for Rock. As you can imagine, the discipleship groups that we have on Sunday morning and the children's moment that we have during worship, those uh, are ministries that primarily reach our own children, that are a part of our church family. Rock reaches our own children, as well as children from other churches, as I said, and then children who don't have a way to learn about Jesus except for on Wednesday afternoons during Rock. For those children, Rock may very well be the only opportunity that they will ever have to come to know Jesus. Another important program that is designed to share Jesus not only with our own children, but specifically and especially for children who may not have a church home is our Vacation Bible School, or VBS. The past several years, we've had VBS in the park on the east side of town, and this year uh, we're planning to have VBS at the east side apartment so we can really get there where those children are that we are focusing on, that we're trying to reach. Uh, Nancy Beckering and Deborah Kettner are leading VBS this year. It will be a one-day Saturday event on August the 2nd. And Nancy and Deborah will need lots of help for that fun day. So if you'd like to come and help tell, Jesus about, tell children about Jesus through this exciting, fun-filled one-day event, mark your place. Mark it on your bulletin insert. Help with VBS on August 2nd. Another important way that we help children come to know and follow Jesus is by sending children and youth to camp at Cedar Canyon. This year we have, I'm not sure, 11 or 12. We had one trying to work out the details this week, so maybe as many as 12 so far signed up uh, through our church to go to camp this summer. Now, as you may know, camp is expensive. And so if you have contributed to help send children and youth to camp, I want to thank you. You're making a difference in someone's life perhaps giving them the opportunity to come to follow Jesus. For many children and youth, Cedar Canyon Camp is a life-changing experience. It's a place where many young people make a lifelong commitment to follow Jesus. Our newest outreach to children is the Backpack Ministry, which we celebrate with our celebrations each Sunday. It's led by Terry Markle. And as she said, it continues to grow. It's only been going for uh, a short time, but it's continue to grow in the number of children that we're reaching each week. This is an opportunity to, to provide food for children who may not have adequate food over the weekend. And what they get is a, a, a bag of healthy snacks for the weekend. Now, this program does not give us many opportunities to tell the children about Jesus, but it does help us to continue Jesus' mission to bring good news to the poor and to feed hungry people. Those who hand out the food on Saturday mornings also have the opportunity to develop relationships with the children and the parents as they come and pick up the food. And through this, we have learned of prayer concerns that we have included in our prayers each week. And so we're, we're developing those relationships. The backpack ministry is a way that we're trying to help children and their families come to know Jesus. If you'd like to help with the backpack ministry by helping to bag up the food or by helping to hand out the food on Saturday mornings, please mark your bulletin insert. For the past several years, and I'm not sure exactly how many years, uh, Ray and Irene Mason, in partnership with James and Shelley Turnbow from the Assembly of God Church, have led our combined youth group on Wednesday evenings. Half the time the group meets at the Assembly of God and half the time they meet here in our youth room. The meetings begin with a meal, and Belinda Head has led uh, this church in organizing the meals when they are meeting in our building, and many of you have helped to provide those meals, and I want to thank you for doing that. Obviously, youth come hungry after a long day of school, and so that's an important ministry, an important part of our youth group. The Masons and the Turnbows believe that God is calling them to other ministries at this time, and so uh, we need new leaders for this youth group. Travis and Christy Copley have answered God's call to carry on the youth ministry for the Assembly of God Church. Now we need to provide leadership from, for our youth group from our church. 
So today I've asked some of our youth to come and tell you why it's important that we have youth group, what it means to them, and why perhaps God is calling one of you or some of you to lead this ministry in the coming year. So youth, where are you? You want to speak from the lectern or from one of those? Okay, grab, jump right up there. Thomas, you can come over if you want to. Hi, my name is uh, Conley Niblett. And one thing that I enjoy about youth group is that I like to be able to go during the week when you have like all this homework and you're worried about this test you're having on Friday. And it's just really nice to be able to go and relax and enjoy worshiping with your friends. Hi, I'm Cassie Cage, and I enjoy going to youth because you get to spend time with friends as you worship God together, and you, you do fun activities as you learn more about God, and it's a lot of fun, and I really enjoy going. Um, first off, I would like to thank Mindy for allowing me to come up here and talk about our wonderful youth group. And at our last youth group, um, I didn't know the turnbows were going to be leaving, but I knew Mr. and Mrs. Mason would no longer be leading the services on Wednesday. And uh, that's actually the reason I wanted to come up here and talk. They're planning on canceling all of our youth groups for good, and I'm trying to convince one of you to take their place. I have a few good reasons as to why not to get rid of our youth group. One of the biggest ones is that it gives kids something to do on Wednesday nights. I don't know if any of you have really looked, stopped and looked around in Milshu, but I'm sure some of you have, but there's literally nothing to do. I mean, there's not a movie theater, nothing. <laughs> and uh, a couple of youth groups in town is about all we got. Getting rid of one of them isn't going to help any either. Another reason would be that our youth group has more than doubled since I first went there, what, probably two or three years ago. I We probably have about 40 kids right now, I'm going to say, R rough estimate. And uh, if you can double the amount of kids you have in two years, two or three years, I think you did your job pretty well. And if our youth group does stay alive, we're going to need a bigger youth room because it's trying to fit those 40 kids and there's quite a chore. Just imagine two or three years from now, we could easily have 80 kids worshiping God every Wednesday night. And a lot of good things can come out of this youth group. I really hope I've influenced some of you just to uh, step up and help out with our youth group. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob and Colleen Cassidy. They said it much better than I could. And I appreciate their courage in standing up here and speaking to you. I think that says a lot for how important youth group is to them. So, if God is calling you to help lead the youth group, there's a place for that right down here at the bottom. Please, if you fill this out, put your name and your phone number, and you can put that in the offering plates when they come by, or you can give them to me at the end of the service, or you can bring them by the church office later this week if you need to think and pray about it. As you can see, there are many people in our church who are actively participating in ministries that help children and youth come to know and to follow Jesus. We do not want to miss the opportunity to continue our ministry to our own youth and to youth who do not have a church except on Wednesday evening when they come to youth group. So please join me in praying that God will call leaders to continue this ministry to youth that the Masons and the Turnbones have led for these past years. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that Jesus came to tell us how important children and youth are to you. We thank you for helping us to understand that we can't wait until someone is an adult. But we have to begin to, to help children come to know your love from the very beginning of their lives. We thank you for the many people in this church who make that happen week in and week out. We ask your blessing upon each one of these ministries and any new ministries that you're calling us to start that would reach out to children and youth. But right now, specifically, we want to thank you for Ray and Irene and James and Shelley and the, 
efforts that they have made in building your kingdom and living in your kingdom and in, in sharing your love with the youth of this community. We thank you that you have um, brought youth to be a part of that ministry, and we pray that you would lay it upon the hearts of those in this congregation that you have identified who have the, the love for you and the love for youth that would continue this vital and important ministry. We've heard from these young people how important it is to them, and we thank you for their ministry, Lord, for these young people are growing up as disciples in this church, and they're leading others to come to know and follow you. They'll bring their friends to youth when we have leaders to lead it. And so we just leave it all in your hands, and we pray that you would prompt those that you are calling to answer that call. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We just stand and sing together. <laughs>